Hello everyone, my name is Dutch Owen and I work with Blackbird Simulations SR71 project. I'm here to give you a tutorial on how to start and taxi the legendary SR71 Blackbird, also known as the Habu. Before we start, just a quick note. We'll be using our audio checklists featuring the recorded voices of Major Brian Shule and Colonel Walter Watson. Using the voice checklists is optional. If you don't select them, you can always use the do-it-yourself checklist provided in the flight manual. Okay, with that out of the way, let's hop on into the cockpit and get started. All right, here we are in the Blackbird cockpit, open. We'll be using our ground crew to assist us in this uh, certain stages in this checklist. So in order to do that, we go down here and we press the intercom call button that calls up our communication wheel which is right here. This is how we get our checklist started and make all other kinds of requests for maintenance or anything the ground crew can do for us. And we'll be, use, we'll be using this quite a bit during the startup process. So we'll go to the root of this little menu system and we'll select RSO checklists. There are a number of them to start before taxi, before runway takeoff. We'll be using ready to start. So we click on that. And when we're doing the checklist, we start it here. If it stops and we need to move it on, we can proceed here. We can have Walt say again any uh, checklist challenge, and we can stop the checklist if we'd like to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start this checklist and let it run. We'll be listening to them check off items. Occasionally, they'll run across an item that is not checked or set properly for us. When that happens, we'll hear a beep, and we have to resolve the problem. So let's start. Hello, the are you there? I'm here, ready to start. Okay. In the phone, check. Check. They like. like. All right, that was our first beep. The bailout light is a light that lets the RSO in the back seat know that he's got a bailout because something has really gone wrong. And so part of this checklist is to check that light out. To do that, we will zoom in on the bailout light, which is right here, open the cover, flip the switch, and if the light works, then Brian will see that and the checklist Check. will proceed. Indeed, Your quantity works. gauge check. Looks good. Right here. Center of gravity check. CGI's good. Very important, right here. Check's good back here. Compute's good. Oxygen supply switches. Oxygen is here. good. Exterior lights. Okay, so here's another item that we need to deal with. We heard the beep. Uh, the reason they don't do it is because there's various ways to configure their lights, and that's up to you, the pilot. So there's a uh, hint here in brackets saying anti-collision light on. So we'll come over here and that's what we'll do. There are other options for flashing and steady and on. fuselage and tail. We'll just turn it on. Great. Feel good. Okay, I'm uh, ready to start. All right, that ends our checklist. Uh, we are all ready to start, so we will go back. We will pick the start engines checklist, and we will start it up and okay, see what happens. I'm ready to start. I'm ready to start the engine. Okay, we got a beep. And it doesn't really tell us what to do, but the message up here is the hint enough. It says, ready to start engines. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, to do that, we're going to have to ask the ground crew to start the AG330 start carts on the engine that we're starting. And it's going to rev up, and then we'll give it some fuel, and the engine, if we're good and lucky, will start. So, let's do that. Let's go. Start engines. Whoops, not that start engines. The ground services start engines. 
And we could start with engine one or two. I'm going to start with engine one. So we simply click on this, and that is a signal to the ground crew to start the rotation. Nothing seems to happen for a moment. And then we see the RPM rising. And we can hear in the background the engine revving up. When we get around 1,000 RPMs, we give it some fuel. Throttle here. And the engine begins to spool up, which you can clearly tell from the noise or sound. All right, we started engine number one. It, the uh, rotation reset automatically for us, as happens on the SR-71 with these particular start carts. So we'll start engine two, rotation. Same process, it's harder to hear them here revving up, but we watch here, right here, the uh, RPMs to get above a thousand. And we're there, we get some fuel to the right engine. Needle starts to move faster. Tip counter check. About 4,000, the tab will fire off. Check. Both Two engines are started now, and the checklist moves on. He Two checked the gone. tabs to make sure they're 15. Best Generator switches over here. That would be about here. Uh, okay, am I disconnecting there? External power coming out. Okay, we got another beep. Uh, we have some items to do. We would need to disconnect the cart, remove the ladders, and close the canopy. We don't do any of those things ourselves. We get the ground crew to do them for us. So that we move back here to the ground services menu disconnect the carts. And that's the end of that. We remove the ladders. That's the end of it. They see that we're doing it. That's the end of it. And close the canopy. Now if there's a little bit quieter in here. And we have our engine started. That's really all there is to the start checklist. Our RPMs look normal. About 3950 RPMs per engine. That's a normal array of uh, warning lights at this point. Our next task is to go and do the before taxi checklist. So we go to RSO checklists and do before taxi. This checklist will work pretty much like the others have. So let's just get it going. Before okay, taxi, well, uh, start checklist. Taxi. Flight instruments check. Okay. We want to turn on these Wait, two switches. Uh, instruments are good. Check. Canopy seals. All right, we have to seal the canopy. Up here. TDI check. All right, we're going to need to run the bit test now. The bit test is a bit of a time-consuming thing, but we're going to watch it run. Um, here's how you do it. This is all described in the manual. We flip on all the SAS switches here, the stabilization augmentation switches. We click the keys hold on, the heading hold on, and the pitch and roll autopilot switches on, and that sets the preconditions in addition to the pusher shaker being up here. Preconditions for the bit test. We flip on this thing and flip this little switch, and if we got all the right switches in the right order, we get a green light right here, meaning the bit test is running. And it runs for about a little over a minute, and you will see lights flashing. Here's the A computer out warning light switch. It's cycling that computer right now. It goes through all kinds of checks to make sure. You see, you see the shaker light flashing up here to make sure that the warning systems are going to be working. It then begins a sequence. It does the B computer, and then begins a sequence of the uh, SAS lights here, and if you look over here, you can see this needle moving. What it's doing is it's moving the spikes on both engines all the way back, and then when you get all the way back, 
it'll reverse and move them all the way forward, which is what it's doing right now. If they get stuck, don't move, there's any kind of problem, the bit test will fail. The bit test can fail if you have failures turned on in your SR71. And if you don't do the bit test and skip it, you could run into those failures later when you're in the air and you don't want that to happen. So we have uh, unstart lights flashing as it checks all the unstart recovery uh, circuitry, which you definitely want to be sure it's working. And at the end of this, after a few seconds, the bit test will reset and you will find out if it passed. See all those switches flip back? We reset it here, close this. All right, so Walt says, hey, the bit test is good. Brian saw that it, we passed it because we saw the green light flashing. This green light here, if you'd seen a red flashing light, the bit test would have failed. In which case, you would probably need to go up here to a maintenance request to repair bit failures. You can also do general repairs, burned out bulbs, all kinds of things. But we're going to go back to the checklist. It says, ready to taxi, remove chocks, nose wheel steering on, test brakes. So that is what we will do. Three things. Remove chocks. Whoops. Remove chocks. Ground services. All right. It says place chocks. They are removed. Nose wheel steering on. That's a button. There are two options in the SR71. By default, the nose wheel steering is automatic. That's a sim feature, not reality. In reality, you always had to control it manually. And that's what I've got doing here. I'll press the button. And when it turns on, this little green light here says steer on. So we've got that done. The only other thing to do is test the brakes. When I press on the brakes. Brakes are good. Steering's on. Good. Okay. We are done with our checklist. We can click on this mirror here. When the cockpit is down, we don't have to use that call button down there. We can just press on the mirror and the walk wheel will come up and you can operate it any way you want to. All right, we are done. We are ready to taxi. Just for fun, I'll look down here and make sure we have a normal set of lights. SAS out, yes, we want the SAS switches to be off when we're taxiing. Pitot heat is not on. And ANS ref means we don't have a flight plan. That's the case. Because uh, what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is flying the pattern rather than a flight plan. Okay, to taxi, chocks are off. The SR does not have a parking brake. So we just give it some gas gently and carefully to get it started. And we roll on out of the hangar. We're going to go for runway 15 today, so we simply use our rudder pedals to turn. There's nothing particularly hard about the SR-71. The only thing is, while I'm talking, I'm giving it a little more gas than I should, and it's tending to want to speed up and run away with me. That's something it always wants to do. You'll find the SR eager to go faster than you need it to at a particular moment so you have to control it and set this thing just the right level and then you'll be fine so I'll join you in the next tutorial thanks everybody have you happy landings I hope this has been helpful I'm talking and letting the SR running all over the place uh, I will see you in the next video where we'll be at the edge of the runway doing the before takeoff checklist thanks everybody for joining see you next time